On e England's Yorkshire coast, cliffs are eroding at record speed, exposing fossils of ancient climate catastrophes. Keiko climatologist Marina Jerka is here with what warming waters could mean for life on Earth. Marina. Amy, right now off Southern California coastlines, we're witnessing record toxic algae blooms, killing marine life as our oceans heat up. To understand where this could lead, I traveled to the Yorkshire coast, where rocks hold the story of a Jurassic mass extinction. What I found there is a warning for us today. On England's Yorkshire coast, towering cliffs crumble into the sea where fishing villages cling to the edge of time. It's a landscape both breathtaking and fragile, Europe's fastest eroding shoreline. But with every collapse, we have discovered these cliffs reveal something extraordinary, an ancient archive where fossils and rock layers hold the story of climate change written into Earth itself. We are running out of time in the sense um, the Holderness Coast is the fastest eroding coastline in all of Europe, so we're losing about nine metres a year on the Holderness Coast, which is really quite scary. This is why, as a climatologist and researcher, I came to study in this area where time is of the essence. You can see here the vast amount of time in Runswick Bay that moves from the Cleveland Ironstone area, which was a, a very healthy seabed during the early, early Jurassic time period. Moving just a little bit here to my right, we are able to then move into the early Jurassic and we can see that there was a mass extinction because of the lack of oxygen in the seabed. And that is that darker, Whitby mudstone that you can see to my right here that goes all the way up to the sandstone at the top. So we're talking about up to 180 million years going through this ancient seabed floor that tells a very unique story. South America and uh, Africa are beginning to pull apart. As they do so, a lot of volcanic activity starts to kick greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. That starts to warm up the Earth's climate. The shallow seas seem to have been very badly affected by this warming. We get evidence that many different species that were living here disappear. We could take a bellum knight, for example, a kind of Jurassic Cretaceous squid-like creature, and the the guard, the hard part of that body, can lock in information about the chemistry and the temperature of an ancient sea. These rocks don't just tell us about ancient oceans. They tell us about the chemistry of climate change itself, locked inside fossil shells and layers of shale. These thin, dark layers mark a moment when the Earth's ocean lost its oxygen, killing off marine life in massive numbers. This is called an anoxic event. And we can see warning signs of this happening in today's ocean when it comes to massive dead zones as well as toxic algae blooms. Jurassic Whitby's mass die-off and the recent toxic blooms over the spring in Southern California aren't the same disaster, but they mirror each other. In both, a warming ocean stripped of oxygen pushed ecosystems to the brink. But there is always hope. Life, given the chance, will recover and rebound, and these trace fossils tell us that you know, these things happen, but um, you obviously have to give, give life the chance to do that, and if you make habitats uh, uninhabitable, then that's a, that's a challenge, and, but these fossils can tell us some quite important stories for future Earth. I know it's difficult in a world we live in. Everyone doesn't have to be a huge eco-green warrior, but if we all do our little bit, it's, it's going to make the world a better place. The past doesn't predict the future, but it can inform it. From these eroding cliffs, we're not just reading a record of extinction, but we are being given guidelines for survival because if we learn from what is lost maybe we can choose what's worth saving in whitby on the yorkshire coast marina jurica kcal news oh, and uh, excellent reporting there Thank marina you. let's talk a little bit about how climate change is really affecting ocean warming all right, so the oceans are warming up mm -hmm. as an effect of climate change. So it's making this ocean anoxia mm -hmm. just more common. So it's okay. occurring more often. So warming waters hold less oxygen. We mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. And so think about a warm soda bottle, right? It goes flat a whole lot faster when you've got mm -hmm. it out on the counter. Mm -hmm. It goes flat very quickly. So with warmer seawater, it can't hold as much of that dissolved.
dissolved oxygen. Okay. And so we're seeing that push and that pull. So climate change isn't just heating the ocean up, it's actually suffocating it. And of course, all the active marine ecosystems mm -hmm. that are in there. Mm -hmm. And in your research, how did you determine that what's happening now was happening then. So we take something like an ancient Jurassic creature, like a bellum knight, mm -hmm. which was that squid-like creature yeah. that you saw, and it's encasing that hard shell that's at the end of it. We are able to dig that fossil up and actually dissect it and able to mm. see the ocean chemistry at that time, which showed wow. us there was a depletion of oxygen. There was a chemistry in the ocean where it was warming, and then we had this mass die-off. So these are all red flags that we are seeing right now that are coming up mm -hmm. in our oceans currently today that are red flags warnings that this is what happens when our oceans warm. Wow. All right. Just, I mean, remarkable research. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Appreciate that.